Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life podcast. I am your host, Lori Palau, and I am coming to you solo today. So we are just wrapping up this incredible series that we started this year, which was our room by room organizing series. So if you haven't had a chance to go listen, I encourage you after this episode, you can go back and um, check out. We've had some really great guests and we were talking about some traditional spaces that we always think of like kitchens and closets. And then we were also talking about some kind of out of the box spaces like nursery prep. And so um, I just loved hearing from all of these different experts and giving some specific actionable things that you can do at any time of the year, honestly. But so many people really kind of use the start of a new calendar year to jumpstart their organization journey or decluttering journey. And so that's why we wanted to kick off the year with that um, with that in mind. And I was going back after when I was thinking about, you know, what do I want to do kind of in conclusion to tie up the room by room series, which actually took us, you know, probably like 10 weeks to do. And there was one theme as I listened to each one of the episodes that kept popping up. And it really was the theme of simplicity. And it wasn't about minimalism. That wasn't, so there's a distinction between the minimalism and simplicity, but it was all about how easy can I make this? How easy can I make this space to live in, to find what I'm looking for? And I always, whenever I'm at a crossroads, with anything, my go-to question that I ask, and I ask this in my life, I ask this in my family, and I certainly ask this in my clients is, what is the ease of retrieval? When people say, oh, I know where it is, or I have a great system, I say, what is the ease of retrieval? How quickly can I go to get this if I need it? And that doesn't just mean physical stuff, right? It can mean your sweater, jacket, shoes. It can also mean pictures or paperwork, all of these things, how quickly can I get it? And so the simpler the system that you have set up, the easier it's going to be for you to find it. Because one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of people make is overcomplicating the system for any space. And so if you can, my kind of rule of thumb, if you will, is if something takes more than two steps, it's going to be, it, it's not going to be sustainable. So that's like my, that's my rule of thumb with most things. Like if you're going to ask your kids to um, take off their shoes and put them in this one thing and then go here, it's forget it. They're not doing it. It needs to be one or two steps max for most things in order for it to be sustainable. Um, and that goes with anything, with opening the mail, putting away your keys, um, clothes. You know, if you have this really complex like laundry routine, either no one else is gonna be able to stick with it, only you can do it, or it's just something that other people are gonna feel frustrated and not be able to learn it. And so they're just gonna abandon ship. And so I think the other thing that I wanted to talk about is about the volume of stuff that's coming in. And again, this isn't a ploy for minimalism. And I will admit that the older I get, the less stuff I want, the less stuff I find that I need. But I'm also in a season of life where I don't have little kids at home. I don't have the hustle and bustle and chaos of I that I did 10 years ago 
when I had a bunch of moving parts at a million miles an hour. And so sometimes the volume of things is out of your control to a certain extent. Like there's just going to be stuff, right? Your kids are going to be involved in activities and that those activities come with things, you know, they're going to have homework and that's going to be, you know, uh, that's going to contribute to paper clutter. Um, there's just going to be volumes of stuff, but what you can control is the excess stuff. Are we bringing in volumes of clothes, food, shoes, beauty products that we don't need that is ultimately just contributing to more things to maintain? Is it making it harder for us to maintain? And if the answer is yes, then it makes me rethink, do I really want that volume? So I usually am a big fan of saying things are both and, right? It doesn't have to be either or. But at some point, when it comes to our space, right, when it comes to our physical space, there is an either or, right? We do hit a max capacity. We hit a max capacity for the closet or the drawer or the cabinet or the closet. And all of those things, we have to then make choices. Are we going to choose our stuff or are we going to choose the space and the freedom that comes with it? And there's not a right or wrong. But if your goal is to live an organized life, and if your goal is to reduce the amount of chaos and anxiety and stress and overwhelm that you might be feeling, one of the solutions might be to reduce the volume. And as soon as you reduce the volume, that immediately is going to lighten your load, right? Because you're going to have less stuff to organize. And that was another theme that a lot of our guests were saying. You know, the less stuff that you have, the less stuff that you have to organize. So the less mental bandwidth that you have to put in of, okay, where is this going to live? Because you'll have options. When you have a lot of things, you have a lot of the same thing, or maybe you have a lot of categories of things. It requires some mental gymnastics to try to figure out where things are going to live and how we're going to maintain them. So the more you can reduce the volume and not have as many of X or maybe even eliminate a category altogether, then it's less time that you have to spend thinking about where is this going to end up and how can we find it? So the third part that I want to talk about is the communication piece. And I think that this is a very underrated piece of the equation. And especially if you're living with other people. Now, if you're a single person, you know what you want, you know what systems work for you and why you're doing it. But as soon as you add another human into the equation, it tips the scales. And that could be a roommate, it could be a just spouse, it could be a partner, it could be parent-child, it could be um, an aging parent, whatever it is, communication is so important when it comes to simple living. Because we dream in pictures. We, what we envision, what we think we're communicating in terms of clean your room, or I need help. You know, those are very broad stroke statements. And although we think that we're communicating, it's that spec if I'm not specificity, <laughs> it's being specific, okay? Being specific people that really allows people to understand what you're trying to convey as opposed to just going, what do you mean you need help? Okay, well, I'll take the kids out for the afternoon. And what you're really meaning is like, no, I need you to run the vacuum and do the laundry. So being very specific in the language that you're using will help avoid a lot of the emotional stress and anxiety that comes from disorganization and clutter. And maybe it's even just communicating with your kids. Like, again, I've said this before on the show, if you're a longtime listener, when my kids were little, I would explain to them, 
Like we all need to help in and pitch in to do this so that I have more time to spend with you. I have more time to read a book or play with you or watch a TV show, or you'll have more time to do these things if you do that. And so it's not about having to justify yourself, but it's just understanding and explaining the why to somebody else, right? This is how it makes me feel, and this is what needs to happen, and this is why, so that. And whether that is to your kid, to your spouse, to your roommate, whatever it is, um, I think it's really important to have that open line of communication. And it doesn't have to be fancy and it doesn't have to be formal. It just has to be simple and clear, which is again, what our theme is with everything, simple and clear. And, um, you know, I know that for me, and this was especially true when I had a bustling house, but even now, like sometimes I just want a little space that I can go and shut the door. I really felt this during COVID lockdown, which I'm sure most people did, but you just want a space that is free from clutter, that is organized, that you feel a level of control over in the sense that you can breathe, you can think, you can relax, you can let your shoulders down, you can exhale. And even if that space for you, even if you've got like, a tribe of kids and a lot of things going on, even that space is the bathroom <laughs> or a little corner of someplace. You need to have a space that you can go to exhale and use that space as your template for the other spaces in your house. And yes, there's going to be common areas, shared spaces that are gonna have that constant flow of chaos and are maybe never gonna fully be free of clutter, but we can work towards it. We are we can put in certain parameters to help minimize the accumulation of clutter, to help create more organized systems and getting the other people involved in those simple one, to two-step systems max to keep it simple so that we can all be able to exhale and we can all feel like we're in control and calm in our spaces that are most of our sanctuaries, our homes. So um, I hope again that you guys enjoyed this Room by Room series. We've got a bunch of other great guests coming up down the pike as we continue on um, into March, April, and beyond. But again, just let's remember, simple, don't overcomplicate it. Life is complicated enough, people. And so we are here for you. Um, we actually have just created a new landing page for everyone to go to. Um, we've always said you can DM us and you can send us emails, but we have a new, I actually have to, I have to read it because I want to make sure I'm getting it right. It's simplybeorganized.com backslash questions, simplybeorganized.com backslash questions. And you can go there and fill out that form, ask us whatever question that you have, um, about organizing, decluttering, navigating relationships when it comes to clutter, whatever it is that you want to talk about. Um, and we'd love to hear from you. So um, until next week, I'm Lori Palau. If you're not already subscribed to us, make sure you click that follow button. Leave us a review um, on Apple Podcast if you don't mind. We really appreciate that. Um, if you're a YouTube person, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We've got all of our episodes there, but we also have a bunch of shorts that we're adding in. So they're just like small little bite size um, videos, um, talking to different people, asking them questions about physical clutter, emotional clutter, calendar clutter. And it's just another great way to learn from other people, get some inspiration and um, feel a little less alone in your own struggles. So check us out at This Organized Life Podcast. So until next week, I am Lori Palau. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. 
And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Life Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.